That is what the, the Red Sea salvation that we've looked at today and the Red Sea judgment ultimately points to. Not a lesson for your Red Sea moments in life. What, what relationship for you is like a big Red Sea, call on God and he'll split it. What employment situation for you is a, is a Red Sea and, and God need, God's going to partner with you to split it and get you to walk right over it. What, what situation for you is like the Egyptians chasing you and God's going to oppose them and no weapon formed against you shall remain. This is not primarily an application of what to do when you get to a difficult moment in life any more than it is maritime advice. Even the next time you need to get your dodgy triton across a, a, deep, a deep river while you're, while you're four-wheel driving. You can't just pick a stick and go and stand over it. That would be a, a, a misplaced application needed Mitsubishi's, but uh, uh, I drive one, it's all good, uh, but not at all, not at all biblical, just, just as if I would say, what situation do you need God to split? No, the, what, what the Red Sea salvation and judgment points to ultimately is the salvation that God brings, not through Moses, but through Jesus Christ, that God has, seeing us in our sin, written to tell us, and we acknowledge, that there is a tremendous chasm between us and only he can condescend, only he can solve it, only he can part the problem, only he can solve the terrible situation that we find ourselves in. That's what this points to. There's a couple of factors of this story that remind us of the gospel. First of all is the frustration and putting to shame of God's enemies. Just as God drew out Egypt so that he might put him to shame in judgment, God also seemed to bait the hook for the devil in such a way as to put him to shame as he tried, though foolish it was, to oppose the purposes and the gospel and the victory of the Lord Jesus Christ. It says in Colossians chapter 2, verse 15, that God has disarmed the rulers and the authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him. This is, not old, this is not the biggest thing that happened in the cross. The, the biggest thing that happened in the cross is our sins being punished for us. And yet, this is an element that God, in the cross, in this sign of apparent weakness and bloodiness and disgust, it was actually that which was putting to shame every demonic power. Every satan satanic attempt to overthrow God was beaten with a naked man on a cross. He put them to open shame. And in his powerful resurrection from the dead was like the pouring of the water onto the enemies of God. They have no grip on him anymore. They are, they, are just, they are separated from the Lord Jesus Christ. Death, sin, Satan, hell are so far removed from the Lord Jesus Christ, more so than the Israelites in Egypt were separated. Jesus is now in eternal glory. Jesus is now in indestructible life. Jesus is now on the throne, not walking around on earth in a humble and meek state. Jesus has, has brought out a victory and ashamed the enemies of God in the spiritual places. But also we see an element here in the salvation at the Red Sea, the reality of being saved by faith and not of works. This whole account of God's redemption from Egypt has shown us that the Israelites were passive receivers who had only to listen to God's promise and then they would be saved. God, continually throughout this passage, shows us and reminds us explicitly, I'm the one doing the saving. You are the saved. You are the receivers. I am the, the, the bringer of salvation. Every bit of effective salvation from first to last has been, God, has been God's work. And this reminds us of salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ is a gift for what you do not deserve a gift from God that he has done everything and you merely receive. To you who have received salvation and fear losing it. To you who desire salvation but fear whether or not sin and hell will swallow you whole. Fear not. Stand firm and see the work that the Lord has done in your salvation. We're not waiting for anything to happen for you to be able to be saved. Fear not. Stand firm. Have faith. Believe and look to what God has done in the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus has not saved you from slavery to Egypt, but offers salvation from slavery to sin, to the dominion of sin over all of your life. He does not save you from the, it is not the claim of Pharaoh that he has over your life that condemns you. It is rather the claim of the condemnation of the law against our souls because of our sin. That's what Jesus saves us from. 
Jesus' salvation does not save you from being drowned in the Red Sea. He saves you from drowning under the wrath of God against us for our sin. Our salvation is not by Moses lifting up his hands over the sea. Our salvation comes from Jesus Christ's hands being pierced and stretched out over a sea of sinners on the cross. Jesus' salvation is not by walking across on dry land. Jesus' salvation is not that you get to the desert of Arabia. Jesus' salvation is that you walk through and receive salvation, eternal life, eternal glory, and the inheritance of Christ given to you. And it is by faith only. He does not command. God does not look at any sinner. Maybe, maybe you know today you're playing church, you're faking Christianity, you're living in sin, and you're unrepentant. Maybe you don't even pretend. You just know you're unsaved. What does Jesus have to say to me? What what do I need to do to be saved? I don't want to drown. I don't want to be judged. I don't want to be condemned. God commands you today to give up your doing. Give up any notion that you need to do anything for God and simply relax, rest, sit, bank, trust yourself into the promise of God that Jesus has done everything and that you are unable to do anything and that he would be pleased. He would love to redeem your life and commands you to trust that. Believe that. And you this day will be saved. No list of doings. No no demands that you have to fulfill. Trust. Jesus says this. John 5, 24. Truly, truly, I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. It is that quick. You believe you have eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. That is the promise of the Lord Jesus Christ on offer for anybody who is condemned by your sin. 